<laughs> Hello, everyone. So glad you're here. Man, that music just gets me so pumped up. I feel like I'm at a rock concert. Super cool. Uh, I know all of you jump to your volumes as soon as that thing comes on and turns it down, right? It is pretty loud. I need to figure out how to reduce the sound on that. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Tim. If you're catching this live right now, you'll see a chat box on the right. Feel free to say hello. Let everyone know where you're coming from, how your classes were today, and uh, just how you're doing in general. I'm doing okay. Uh, Malaysia is going through another massive, massive spike with COVID. Let me know in the chat, are you totally over COVID? Like, done. You've come, you've made your mark, and now it's time to get out of here. I am so over COVID. Um, we're actually going into another lockdown starting tomorrow at midnight, uh, which is just super discouraging. You know, we were pretty much back to normal. Our cases had gone down to about single digits every day. And now we are spiking again. And so the government has put in a conditional movement control order. And starting tomorrow at midnight, you know, there's restaurants are going to be uh, takeaway only limited hours of operation. Uh, only two people can go out from a household to uh, various, whoop, there was my cat making her presence known. Sorry about that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay, but I'm pretty discouraged. Let, let, let me know in the chat how you're doing with everything and uh, where you're tuning in from. I'd love to say hello to folks. So today we've got a fun episode. We're gonna talk about online ESL games. So uh, I'm excited about that. I've been doing some brainstorming and gonna uh, sort of put into uh, a little presentation, some little word games that I play with my students that I thought would be fun for all of you. And maybe you can take away a game or two to play with your students. So welcome everyone. We have got James, you're the first one. Welcome James, good to see you. <clears throat> Cindy says, this sounds like fun. Yep, got some fun games to play. Uh, Susie is here, Janie is here. Nicole is here. Ah, I just finished classes at Wales English. Great. How long have you been at Wales? I do have people that reach out to me asking me about their hiring process, and I don't know a whole lot, and I'm not too sure of how much they're hiring at the moment, so I'd be curious to hear. Uh, Kim is here. Hey, Kim. Yes, looking forward to some new ideas. Hopefully, I can deliver. Um, yes, my friend Maria is here, Bohemian Sun. Good to see you and Alexandra. Happy Can Thank you. You know, it's so funny. Canadian Thanksgiving came and went and I completely forgot. I actually went on a staycation this weekend, had a really great time, uh, went to a new boutique hotel for a couple of nights just to clear my head, get out of the house for a couple of days. And uh, yeah, I completely forgot until I saw Instagram that it was Canadian Thanksgiving. Shame on me, but thank you so much. Uh, Nicole says, literally just got over COVID-19. Like I had it and had to miss classes. Oh my gosh, Nicole, I'm so sorry to hear. Um, yeah, over it. So glad that you're back to health and uh, hopefully you're doing better. So glad you're here today. Uh, Janie says, I'm in Tennessee, classes went well. Sorry, things aren't great in your part of the world. Yeah, nobody, numbers are not good here either. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny, she says, I'm going for my first COVID test today. Yeah, that's another thing. I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but just the thought of sticking that thing up my nose makes me rather poke my eyes out. Um, I've, I haven't had the test and I sort of try to stay clear of ever needing it, but I'm sure it's one of those uh, things that one of these days we're probably all going to have to have it. Uh, my friend's a, a teacher like many of you probably are in, in North America and she had, uh, two students that contracted COVID at her school and they're still going to school. So they're, they're not sure if they're going to distance learning, but it kind of floored me because here in Malaysia, like if, if, if a shopping mall gets one case, the whole shopping mall closes for a few days because we just haven't had that many cases. I think in total, we've had 15,000, um, but about 5,000 of those have been in the last three weeks where we've, our cases have been spiking. So it is just, you know, different perspective, I guess. Um, hey, Stacy. Hello, Millennial Money Moves. Gosh, I've forgotten your first name. I've seen you a bunch of times, though. Hey, Nancy. Um, Nicole says, love to talk about whales. If you have any referrals, I'm trying to help get people out. I've actually been there for three months. Awesome. 
Uh, Catherine says, hi from a cold, wet Wales, different Wales, not Wales, the teaching company. Think we will be going into lockdown this week too. Yeah, so sorry to hear, it's tough. You know, when you go through it and then you come out of it and life was pretty much back to normal. I was back at the gym doing all my gym things and, you know, out and about, uh, pretty free and, and not worrying too much about it. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's hard. Mentally, it's really hard. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm doing okay, but just trying to focus on things that I can control, right? Uh, Vanessa says, hello. Hello, Vanessa. Um, Stacy says, same in Florida. They don't plan to close schools. Uh, teacher Ben. Hey, Ben, I'm a little late after teaching, but I'm here. Yes, awesome. So good to see everybody. I'm in a little bit of a delay here on StreamYard, so, um, and I'm standing. I feel like really um, energetic when I stand up, especially when I teach standing up. I would say 95% of the time I teach sitting down. Let me know in the comments, do you stand up or do you sit down? Uh, but when I do stand up, I definitely feel like I'm giving more of myself to the class. When I'm sitting down, I kind of tend to slouch and, and feel a little bit more lethargic. The class goes a lot slower. So yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this setup. I've just kind of raised everything up a little bit for the live tonight, but I might go back to, uh, to, to standing. So it's also better for your back and everything. I've had two, if you've followed me for a while, you know I had two uh, herniated discs that started about two years ago. So sitting down is not the best, but I, I went through phases of standing up and then finding that that compression also hurt. So anyway. I'm rambling, let's get on with things. Jacqueline says, must be Monday morning. I am here with Tim, yeah, for sure. Um, so what was I gonna tell you? Uh, Gogo Kid has a new demo. I recently did a video yesterday and put that on my channel about the brand new pandas and deer demo. So if you're going through the process with Gogo Kid or know people that are or are thinking about it, definitely check that out. Uh, they have emailed everybody that ever applied with them, I think, in the last three years. So um, it seems to be that they're needing teachers. Um, so you're welcome to check out that video, see what's going on with the new hiring process. That's about it. I am primarily still teaching VIP Kid classes. I have three private students at the moment, and uh, lots of other things are keeping me busy. So it's good. And I'm fortunate that even if we do go into lockdown, in a couple of days that, um, or I should say, when we go into lockdown in a couple of days, I can still work online and, and make money, which is great. So anyway, hope everybody is doing well, um, despite the situation in the world. Uh, Patricia says, I currently sit down, I want to get a standing desk. Yes, I've always been inspired by standing desks. Um, did anyone watch Teacher Michael's recent video? He did one on, I think it was about a, a cheap standing desk, but his setup is very much like mine. If you watch his video, he kind of talks about how his inexpensive setup is sort of like a, a bit of a Jenga operation where everything's kind of gently stacked upon each other. If you could see what I have going on here, I have a laptop on top of a coffee maker box and the laptop stand fits corner to corner almost exactly. So any... Um, any, yeah, knock of it would uh, send everything onto the ground. So I've got to be very careful and keep Indian away from the, the laptop. But that's the only thing, if you don't have a proper standing desk, usually you're kind of using a makeshift standing desk, piling things on top of each other. And yeah, it can, it can go uh, south pretty quickly. So Kim's asking about Zebra English. No, I have not. Um, they're definitely still not hiring and I'm kind of waiting as well. To, to see because I, I really like recommending them to people because I think they are a great company and the classes that I have taught with them, I've really enjoyed. So yeah, I'll definitely post uh, somewhere on my channel uh, if I hear that they are opening up again. Hannah says, I just started Goga Kid and I'm only booking half my slots. Hmm, interesting, yeah, I know they're definitely on a bit of a hiring boost, but um, I guess nothing's guaranteed from the beginning, much like VIP Kid and the others, you've got to, you know, kind of grind away and stick with it and just be as available as you can. So, all right, well, there's 30 plus people here. Thank you so much for joining. Um, it would be so helpful if you could hit the like button and it just helps the video. Um, I didn't share this anywhere, so I wasn't sure anyone was gonna show up. So I feel, yeah, I feel 
lucky that I have some viewers and we're going to get into uh, talking about online ESL games. So this inspired me. Well, I, I'll back up a little bit. I watched, um, I watch and follow uh, Mike's home ESL. He is a pretty much strictly ESL games uh, YouTube channel. He has great content. He's got like over, I don't know, I think it's 200,000 subscribers. Great guy. Sometimes he might, he's in the chat here. So uh, Mike, if you're here, shout out to you, bro. Uh, he inspired me to start thinking about, you know, games that you could sort of incorporate from the brick and mortar type setting into the online classroom. And I haven't quite figured out, you know, the best ways to do that. But I do think that there are uh, some really fun and engaging ways that you can bring games into your classroom and to make things fun. And I know if you teach for an online, an online ESL company, you know that our time is really rigid and we don't have a lot of extra time to play games. And so I think the games that work best for us are games that reinforce the learning that happened in the class um, and that we what we can connect to uh, the class uh, lesson uh, with our student. So what I'm gonna go over today, it's not revolutionary, but it's some fun games that you might be able to use if you've got extra time. I know, who, who has extra time? But maybe if you wanna use it as a reward or if you have a couple of minutes at the end of class, I think it's really valuable. And it just adds to that connection that you are developing with your students. So this works really well for teaching with a company. I think it would also, these would work really well if you use Zoom as a platform to teach students or if you're working for a marketplace type company like OutSchool, um, you know, uh, you could incorporate different games into there. So while I'm talking and I'll pull up my presentation, let me know what games you play, if any, in your classroom and if any of these are valuable. So let's do a little share screen here. And I'm going to see if this works. Let's have a look here. All right. Let me see what you can see. Can you see what I can see? Yes, okay, so I'm gonna pop back over here. Ah, looks good, all right, awesome. Okay, and you see my little guy there, he's even animated. Uh, I just made this on Canva today, actually, so Canva is amazing. If you don't use Canva, do jump in. If you ever need to design anything at all, it's super, super fun. Um, and you can make really cool presentations, graphics, social media things, all kinds of stuff. So let's pop in. Okay, so we're gonna talk about seven games today. Give me five, link a word, two truths and a lie, tic-tac-toe plus, word finder, robot man, and don't say the word. So the first game I've got is give me five. So this is a game where you can, it could be played many different ways. Um, and I have used this game in sort of a category type of situation where you would choose a category like food and then you would get the student to give you five food items related to the, to, well, obviously to food. So whatever category you've chosen. So if it's a more advanced learner, you know, you might want to use something like countries. And, and uh, I, I've used this several times with my older students. I think it's in level four with the travel unit where you can get the student to tell you as many countries as they can. And to make it even more interesting, you could give them a time limit and create that sense of urgency. Uh, Melissa says, I gave a journey workshop on gamifying your lessons. Awesome. I showed games you could use as a reward and also how we can turn the curriculum slides into games. Well, that's awesome, Melissa. Yeah, you're way ahead of me on this. Um, would love to know your ideas as well. Do you have any uh, videos on this? Uh, yes, we all see what you see. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Welcome, Patricia. Glad you're here as well. Um, so you could give the student like one minute to kind of make it really fast. Um, and you can also kind of level it up and make it harder by getting them to uh, only say words with a particular letter. So let's say you're doing food. You could say you've got 30 seconds to tell me five foods that begin with L. Go. So you're going to go lettuce, lemon, you know, lychee. Um, bleh, I don't know, but it gets fun, right? Because you, you kind of have to think on the spot. So that's give me five. Um, you could also twist this game and have them say, you know, give me five um, ice cream flavors that you like or make it personal to them. So another great, uh, great way to kind of 
uh, tailor it to, uh, to them. So next one is link a word. Okay. So with link a word, you provide another category like food and you're basically, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this done a thousand times and played it with kids, but this is such an easy game to play in the classroom. Uh, provide a category and then start with the first word. So as a teacher, I would say tomato. And then I'm gonna ask the student to make a word that starts with the ending letter of that word. So they've gotta come up with a food word that starts with O, okay? So it can get really, really challenging. If your student is like level, two, maybe higher level two and level three, you might wanna just let them say any word that they can think of. Um, the higher level they are, obviously you can be more specific and you know, uh, require them to only use words within particular categories. So this is a, a good one for uh, just really, it could be like less than a minute at the end of your class um, to a, a fun way to sort of end the class together. So there's link a word. Okay, two truths and a lie. I thought, let's just play this for fun right now. Two truths, one lie. So with two truths and a lie, you're essentially saying, two truths about yourself and one lie. And the student has to guess which one is the lie. And then you can get the student to uh, do it back to you. And I would use this game as kind of an intro to the lesson maybe. Um, and it would probably only work with like older students, but uh, let's see if anybody can guess the lie from my two truths and a lie. So my two truths and a lie are, remember you're going to tell me in the chat which one is a lie, okay? Okay, um, first one. I prefer coffee over tea. Okay, that's the first one. Second one, my parents were 36 years apart in marriage. Okay, that's the second one. The third one is I was born in the Bahamas, okay? So I prefer coffee over tea, number two. My parents were 36 years apart in marriage. And number three, I was born in the Bahamas. So let me know in the chat, which one is the lie? I think my chat is stuck. So hopefully uh, as we keep going, I'll see a couple pop up. So you, you can tell me which one you think is a lie. So this is the game that you could play with your students. Um, get them to do it back to you. You could do it with them. Just a fun uh, intro. So, okay, they're all coming in now. Maria says number two is a lie. Michelle says number two is a lie. Stacy says number two is a lie. Catherine, number one. James says number two. Peachy Keen, number two. Cindy says number one is a lie. So, Okay, more number ones coming in. Remember, it's I prefer coffee over tea. Number two is uh, my parents were 36 years apart in marriage. Number, uh, sorry, in age, not marriage. 36 years apart in age. And number three is uh, that I was born in the Bahamas. Ones, twos. Okay, lots of twos, lots of ones. So what if I told you that you are all wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I do prefer coffee over tea. My parents were 36 years apart in age. It's hard to believe, but it is true. And the third one, uh, I was born in Bermuda. So I was kind of tricking you with that a little bit. A lot of people get Bermuda and Bahamas mixed up. So I thought that would be an easy one to throw you off. Yeah, I was born in Bermuda. So that was the lie. So that's funny. Everybody got it wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah, my parents, my my mom, without going into too much detail, was 30. My dad was 66. Wonderful marriage showed my brother and I just a great representation of love. And yeah, it is uh, it, quite unique. Um, yeah, a part in marriage means separate. Yeah, I corrected that. So a part in age. Okay, so very good. So you can play two truths and a lie with uh, your students. Okay, let's pop back up over here. Okay, next one is tic-tac-toe plus. So we know the traditional tic-tac-toe game. 
you can just draw the lines. I've done it with students the really, really boring way that creates no language or stimulation or conversation. Don't play tic-tac-toe like that. There are a thousand ways to take this to the next level. Even if you play tic-tac-toe and just have the students give you the directional language of where the X is, don't let them just put X in the corner. Make them say, you know, top left or top right. So you're, at least you're bringing in a little bit of language. Otherwise, you're playing a tic-tac-toe game in complete silence. There's no need to speak, right? It speaks for itself. So this uh, way of playing it is to use words from the lesson. So it does require you to either quickly bring them in or prepare in advance uh, on your whiteboard. So you could easily just, you know, make a tic-tac-toe board on your whiteboard and put the vocabulary words in here. Now, then uh, in order for them to X or O out the spot, they have to use that word in a sentence, right? So pretty simple and straightforward, but just a way to get them speaking um, a little bit, uh, a little bit more, and to make it harder or easier, you know, you just depending on your student's ability, you can um, use letters, you can use colors. I mean, it really is endless, um, and I love these games because they just connect with what you've just learned in the classroom. We don't have time to spend five to ten minutes in a twenty-five minute class playing an irrelevant game. So make sure that your game is, irre is relevant and that you know it's quick, fast, and, and easy to, to do and achieve. Okay, word finder. So this is where you write out um, a long word like encyclopedia. So you're gonna write the word out either on the board, your whiteboard, or in the classroom, and you're gonna get the student to, and you can compete with the student as well, to write as many words as you can out of encyclopedia. Okay, so obviously the younger and the lower level the student adapt as needed. So another fun way to uh, build, build vocabulary and get kids thinking uh, really fast on their feet. Okay, a version of hangman, but call it robot man. And a great you know, variation to this is to use shapes. I know there's many lessons on shapes and pentagons and trapezoids and triangles and circles and squares and rectangles and semicircles and all of that good stuff. So you can use those in your robot to build vocabulary. But, um, you know, another fun way of just making it a little bit less gory and gruesome as hanging a man on a rope, you can use uh, robot man and build the robot, decide with the student first what the robot's going to look like. You could, you know, get the student to tell you the shapes. And then this would be a great one to use as a reward, actually, because you could build it throughout the class or get the student to guess letters throughout the class. Maybe use that last slide uh, if your online school has a blank slide to, um, to use that um, as you uh, get the student to guess the word. Okay, and I think this is the last one. Yeah, so this one is don't say the word. So this is where you're gonna write six to seven words on your whiteboard. So let's say you've got um, some words from the lesson or related to the topic you've discussed, write them on the board and you're gonna get the student to pick one, okay? Once they've chosen one, they're not going to tell you the word. You can keep the whiteboard at bay, you can keep it you know, turned over, it doesn't really matter. And you're gonna have the student help you to guess the word without saying the word itself. So there's lots of um, games like this, uh, like Pictionary, for example, charades, right? Uh, but this is actually getting the student to describe the word without saying the word. There's another adult game like this, but I cannot think of the name of it. Uh, maybe somebody knows. There's a, there's a good one that, that where you have to describe the thing without actually saying the thing. <laughs> it's not words. I think it's a little bit more uh, PG-13 or above. But with this one, you know, have the student, you know, let's say it's ice cream. So the student has to say, okay, teacher, you lick this. Um, it comes like in different flavors. So you, you've got to kind of encourage the student to use more language and uh, describe the word for you. And they're trying to convince you what the word, they're trying to get you to say the word essentially, right? So super, super fun. Um, you could even do it in reverse. I love letting the student pretend to be the teacher and to teach me a game you know, in the same way that I did it with the students. So yeah, that can be really, really helpful as well. So, uh, cool. What is, uh, Rachel, hello. Younger students like to practice writing letters when we play tic-tac-toe, so I let them choose a letter. We've been learning 
and they choose one for me to use. Yeah, that's a great idea. Awesome. SF Mond. I use the tic-tac-toe method in my Spanish to English ESL classroom all the time, and the kids absolutely love it. Yeah, that's really, really awesome. Great ideas. Um, oh, sorry, someone did get Kimberly got it. Peachy Keen says Kimberly got it. Oh, you won! Yes! <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Thank you, Rachel. Lots of ideas. Very, very good. Yeah, taboo. That's I think that's the game I'm thinking of, Kim, for sure. Yeah, taboo or yeah, or catchphrase. Awesome. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, so that is just a little uh little uh some ideas. Hopefully you can take one or two of those games away. You know, I know it's really difficult. I teach for VIP Kid and I do teach a few students on Zoom. So it's really packed with content, right? And like you're really trying to provide value and, and get results for your students. So I know it's hard to incorporate games. It's very different than when you're in a brick and mortar classroom and you've got like, you know, the, the lunch time is in 20 minutes and all the kids have finished. So having games in your back pocket is really resourceful and great to be able to use uh, on the spot. It's a little bit different with online teaching, but um, you can certainly still use games. And I think that these ones are great uh, ones that reinforce vocabulary and and the learning that already happened in the classroom. So hope they were helpful. Um, great. So I uh, have a couple of videos coming out soon on my channel. I can't even remember the uh, the topics. I I pre decide what I'm going to record. <clears throat> I don't batch record because I'm just not that organized. I know people that do YouTube say it like is amazing to just batch record and it saves you so much time and you get a you know, record four videos in a day and plan it out. I have never been able to do that. I just don't work like that. I can't, I don't know, I, I can't sit down and just do all those videos. I, I do them generally when it comes to me and when it feels right. I have, you know, I play with the light and make sure that it's not a thunderstorm outside. So I don't batch record, but uh, I forget what videos I have coming up, but I, I do have uh, weekly videos still that I'm producing, um, yeah, for online teachers and uh, pivoting a little bit in my content to really show the business side of online teaching and how online teachers can make more income. And so uh, I hope you're enjoying some of those. And of course, I have all the the old uh, getting hired into into various companies on my channel as well that um, that I will always keep updated because people do find um, those videos helpful when they're when they're getting started. So, yes, thank you, Michelle, very helpful. I'll use these with my students on Zoom. Yeah, awesome, very, very good. So that's it, everybody. Um, unless anyone has any questions or wanted to say anything else, uh, I will sign off now and bid you all a very great day, whatever you are going to do, or evening, depending on, or afternoon, depending on what time zone you're in. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, and uh, thanks for participating in the chat if you were able to do that. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, do all those great things, and uh, I will see you next Monday, same time, same place, and we'll have some more fun, and uh, yeah, stay safe out there, and have a good day.